everyone, Ian from RTO here. Hope you're all well on this Tuesday. Um, we have now reached the final part of the Ronnie James Dio story. Very short one because we've covered quite a little bit in the past. Um, but I will put in uh, the next video on from Heaven and Hell, which was his last project. So you, you don't miss out. Everything sort of works together now. So, we're going to look at the band Dio. Great band. Um, lucky enough to see them once. Um, I think it was on the Matica tour because he supported Alice Cooper. So, that was a good show. Dio and Alice Cooper. So, Dio were formed around about 1982, uh, led by vocalist Ronnie who left Black Sabbath and he took Vinny Apice with him and he recruited a young guitarist from Ireland called Vivian Campbell and his old bandmate from Rainbow Jimmy Bain. Well, they've had various lineup changes over the years um, they've released 10 albums uh, the band sadly dissolved in 2010 after Ronnie died of stomach cancer. I mean this band have recorded over 20, sold over 20 million albums and there is a sort of a sort of tribute band going around and then they did that thing with the hologram so there's lots of little things going on Um, well, I don't know if I'd want to go and see Dio with a hologram but uh, I know there's people that have been there and seen it so, 10 studio albums to look at today. So, we'll, we'll take a start. So, coming in at number 10, we have the seventh album, released in 1996, Angry Machines. On this, we have got Ronnie James Dio, of course, Tracy G on the guitars. This would be his last album. Um, Jeff Pilson making a return on the bass. Vinnie Epicy making another appearance on the drums. And Scott Warren on the keyboards. This would be his first album. First track on this album is Institutional Man. This is a very dark, heavy, Black Sabbath style thing. Some really heavy riffs. And a great vocal from Ronnie as ever. Uh, second track, Don't Tell the Kids. Great drumming here from Vinny. Uh, but the rest of it's pretty just ordinary. There's nothing there that goes, yeah, great. Ronnie sounds great on it, but uh, it just lacks something, that track. Um, Black, love the riffs in this. Great guitar work here from Tracy G. Uh, really really good and then we get Hunter of the Heart this is a great uh, bass line here from Jeff Pilson really good bass player some more powerful drumming from um, Vinny but heck, it's not an inspiring song it seems a little bit generic uh, doesn't really go yeah you know this is Ronnie James Dio type thing but um, yes yeah, so it's a difficult track I don't dislike it I just find it a little bit uh, plastic is, if, if that's a word to describe it um, let me get stay out of my mind it's okay it's a quite a slow sort of track um, it's okay Big Sister that's no, not too bad I like that one nice little rocker Double money. It sounds that very deep, that Black Sabbath sounding record. Golden Rules. It's alright. Dying in America. It's okay. Again, it's not brilliant. Um, This is your life doesn't really fit on this album 
piano track. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, weird way to end the album. It's not a bad album. Yeah, it's an album I don't play very often. I just didn't connect with this one when it came out. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay then, coming in at number 9. We've got the 10th and the final album from Dio. Released in 2004. It, the album marks the second return of guitarist Craig Goldley. So on here we've got Ronnie James Dio, um, Greg Coldley on the guitar and keyboards, Jeff Pilson on the bass, Simon Wright on the drums and Scott Warren on the keyboards. One more for the road. Great track, Races Away, great heavy metal track. Love that track, good stuff. Master of the Moon, some great drumming here from Simon Wright. Um, great gold, these guitars are on this, really good strong track. Um, at the End of the World, again, then great riffs from Craig. Jeff's bass line is brilliant, Ronnie's vocal is pretty awesome as well. Shivers, my favourite track on this one, uh, it's... So it's got a proper heavy metal rock track and Ronnie kills the lyrics absolutely brilliant song uh, The Man Who Would Be King another quite mini epic uh, Ronnie is on fire um, The Eyes it's an okay it's that melodic sound but Bonnie, Ronnie sounds great Living the Light it's okay it's not one of my favorite tracks on this album um i am typical sort of dio sort of riffs great guitar work from craig excellent track and death by love ah this really goes back to the heyday of dio in them early years it really is a good track excellent track and the last track in dreams Got some nice strong riffs again from Craig. Sounds absolutely brilliant. I mean, obviously at the time we would, didn't know this would be Ronnie's last album with Dio, um, but it's a good way to end. There's some solid tracks on this one, and I think Ronnie sang really well on this. He gave it his all as he usually does. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of eight out of ten. Okay then, coming in at number 8, this might surprise a few people, but it's the third album from 1985, Sacred Heart. This was the last album, of course, that Vivian Campbell appeared on. So we've got Ronnie James Dio, Vinnie Appice, Jimmy Bain, Vivian Campbell, and Claude Schnell on the keyboards. This opens up with King of Rock and Roll, love this track. Uh... Just a brilliant track. Great guitar work here from Viv. Brilliant stuff that one is. Then we get my favourite track, Sacred Heart. I just love this track. It's got that real classic um, sounding um, video on it. Brilliant track. Uh, Another Life. Now this one, it's so 1980s heavy metal and I didn't like the sound on that at all it just again it's the age of MTV who sort of pioneered music but it also ruined certain genres they wanted all this radio friendly rock music and, and honestly that another life fits into that then we get rock and roll children okay very radio friendly but it's a good track, I like that. Hungry for Heaven. Yeah, it's one of the tracks I really don't like. Um, it's just too poppy, commercial MTV sort of dribble, and I don't, it just didn't suit 
I didn't like that track. It, I just found it a little bit wishy-washy for, for Ronnie James Dio. Um, like the beat of a heart. Love this track. Really good riffs. Some great work from Vivian on that one. Just another day. It's got a little bit of um, Neon Knights feel to it. It's pretty good. Fallen Angels. It's got some great guitar work from Vivian on it. It's not too bad. Shoot, shoot. 80, 80s heavy metal. It's not too bad. Okay, this is a solid out. It is a good solid album. Forget the MTV hits on this. The rest is proper Dio. Um, there are about three or four tracks on here that are rock. The rest are just commercial rock. But I've sort of got a bit of a thing for this album. So I'm still going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.2. Okay, then coming at number seven, we got the fifth album now, released in 1990. Lock up your walls, and this is a completely different lineup from the previous album. The only person left in the band is Ronnie himself. So on guitars, he had Rowan Robinson. It was his only album on guitars. Jens Johansson on keyboards. His only album. Teddy Cook on bass. His only album. But this was Simon Wright's first album. On the drums. Wild One. Great opening track. Robinson's guitar work is pretty good on this. I like it. Um, Born. Born on the Sun. Love the bass line on here. Very heavy metal. Great vo vocals from Ronnie on this one. Excellent track. Hey Angel. Another heavy track here. Some great drumming from Simon Wright. And Ronnie is on the button. Between Two Hearts. Again, very Black Sabbath sounding. Of the Ronnie days with Black Sabbath. And really dark evil riffs. Pretty good night music, classic sort of song, great solid rock track. Then we get the title track, Lock Up The Walls, my favourite on here. It's sort of a great little evil rock, Black Sabbath style again, it's just a great track. Evil on Queen Street, slow, heavy riffs from this. Ronnie is on the mo money again good track uh, walk on water just one of those fast and furious Dio tracks um, Rowan's guitar work is good great guitar solo on this very very good twisted another solid tracks more brilliant drumming from Simon this does what it says on the tin um, and then we get why are they watching me Good track, some great riffs on this. And Ronnie, as ever, delivering the um, goods. Uh, my Eyes. Mm, it's a little bit, probably the weaker track on it. Um, it's got a good guitar solo on it. Um, just loses its way, this track, for the last track. I think this is a very underrated album. It's got some really good tracks on here. Um, the last one's a little bit, bit mediocre, but it's a great album. And I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.3. Okay then, coming in at number 6. A bit of a surprise, this is one that a lot of people don't like, but I like this album. It's the 8th album from 2000. And it is Magica. It's a concept album. Again, this remarks a return of Craig Goldley. And a return of Jimmy Bain and Simon Wright. So we've got Ronnie James Dio, Craig Goldley, Jimmy Bain and Simon Wright on this. Okay, opens up with a little piece called 
discovery it's the introduction to the concept really really good uh, nice way in then we get the magic of theme which is really short but poignant now this is the tour I saw on them on and they played a couple of the tracks from this it really is I suppose that's why I like this album then we get Lord of the Last Day got some really strong riffs in this the drumming from Simon is brilliant and you get one of Jimmy Bain's classic bass lines terrific track um, Fe Fever Dreams Dreams, um, typical Craig Goldley uh, riffs Jimmy Bain again pumping out the bass line and a great vocal from Ronnie um, Turn to Stone I love the start of this that industrial drumming sounds brilliant and you get these great riffs this is very progressive metal and um, I remember them doing this live and it is absolutely brilliant live um, great track Feed My Head this is a bit of a slow track very ballady sort of thing but it's quite good nice change of pace Ariel I love the riffs in this and that keyboard just gives it that little extra layer of texture very very good track Chalice another great Jimmy Bain bass line great drumming again from Simon Ronnie is absolutely amazing vocal on that absolutely brilliant um, as long as it's not about love this one does take a lot of time to get going it's a little bit dull at the beginning but once it comes in with the great guitar riffs it turns out to be a really good track losing my insanity this sounds very magnum but it's a good track um, sounds like something the magnum were doing at the time as well so it's a really strong track Otherworld that probably one of the weaker tracks on here let me get the Magicka reprise I think it should have just been added to the original the first bit and would do it as one track then we get Lord of the Last Day reprise don't know what's going on there then we get the Magicka story now do I want to hear a story on a metal album no what should have happened with this is it should have been on this album <laughs> I never played this I played it once I think but I just don't want to hear a story a story that's from my audio um, iPod when I go to sleep um, so it was a pretty poor ending for the album what should have happened is they should have had the album on a separate disc they should have had this that would have been perfect but the songs on here are really good I love this album and I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like it but I do it just reminds me of the stuff he used to do with Rainbow um so for the music side of it, I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay, then coming in at number five, we have the six album. And as usual, I have not put down when it came out, so it appears here. Um, and it's Strange Highways. It was the first album since Ronnie James Dio and Vinnie Apice had been on a reunion tour with Black Sabbath. So this is Ronnie James Dio, this was Tracy G's first album, also Jeff Pilson's first album, and Abini Apice on the drums. First track on here is Jesus, Mary and the Holy Ghost. Now this track I think, I wonder if this was a track that didn't get on the Black Sabbath album, or a track that he was writing for another Black Sabbath album, because it's so... Um, black sabbath style it really is good i like that track firehead love this track great guitar work tracy g is a pretty good guitarist and i love that change of tempo halfway through this solid track 
uh, Strange Highways. Love this track again. Was this for Black Sabbath or a leftover from the Dehumanizer album? Solid track. Hollywood Black. Now this is again heavy driving track. That great um, sort of heavy metal riff that always sits. Always says this is heavy metal. It's one of them riffs that defines the word heavy metal. Um, Evolution. Great vocal from Ronnie on this one. My favourite track on the album, and this is one of his best vocal um, performance on this album. Pain, another heavy track with some great drumming from Vinnie, vintage Vinnie Apathy drumming, excellent track. One Foot in the Grave, another track, heavy riffs, Ronnie is a killer, killer on this, absolutely brilliant. Give Her the Gun, that opening riff is so evil, eerie, and then goes into this great heavy um metal track and um great track blood from the stone from a stone sorry again great bass line here from jeff pilson um solid love that track here's to you again one of them fast and furious heavy metal songs great licks and ricks from chase tracy g bring down the rain great track it's got probably tracy g's best guitar solo that he did with Dio, great way to end the album. This is a really heavy album, probably one of the heaviest albums that Dio made. And as I said, I don't know if this some of these songs were intended for a Black Sabbath album or leftovers from Dehumanizer, but Ronnie's brilliant on this. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.6. Okay then, coming in at number four, we have the ninth album, released in 2002, Killing the Dragon. On here we've got Ronnie James Dio, this was Doug Aldrich's only um, performance on the guitars. This was also Jimmy Bain's last album with Dio and Simon Wright on the drums. First track is Killing the Dragon, super riffs here from Doug. And Jimmy Bain um, bass line is terrific great song along comes a spider love this great guitar from Doug I mean, he's a fine guitarist and Ronnie's vocal is brilliant scream some really good guitar work at the start here from Doug again a great vocal from Ronnie better in the dark Oh, this this reminds me so much of Tarot Woman in Places and Kill the King. It's a combination of them two songs. That's a great track, written by Jimmy Bain and Ronnie James Dio. So that's why it probably sounds very rainbow. Rock and roll, terrific track. Just just anything that says rock and roll in it, it's always going to be good. Um, push. love the fades in and out on this it, it really does add to the track it's a little bit different really good track guilty uh, another one of those grinding little tracks with great riffs great drumming from Simon throw away children my favorite album track off this album probably some of my fa my favorite Ronnie vocals on this on this album and probably one of his great performances in his whole career it's a fantastic track before the fall it's okay it's got a classic heavy metal riff and some solid drumming cold feet probably a bit of a filler track on here it's not the best track on the world in the world solid album apart from the last track it's they're all good tracks some great guitar work on from Doug pity he didn't do any more and it's a great way for Jimmy to sign off with his work with Ronnie over the years. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9 out of 10. Okay, then coming at number 3. Another fourth album released in 1987. 
Dream Evil, um, Ronnie James Dio on the vocals, Vinny Epsi on drums, Jimmy Bass, Jimmy Bain on bass, sorry, Craig Goldley on guitars, this was his first first one, and we've got Claude Schnell on um, keyboards, and this was his, I think it was his last appearance on an Dio album opens up with the brilliant night people I remember when I saw him this is what they opened up with it's a great track I just like that dun 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 great track great opening track let me get the um, uh, title track Dream Evil I love this that keyboard sound that Claude got on it really gives some uh, texture on this great vocal from Ronnie then we get Sunset Superman, one of my favourite tracks by Dio. Absolutely a brilliant track. Saw them do this live on the tour, I saw them as well. It's just a brilliant track. All the Fool Sailed Away, bit of a ballady type track. Great guitar solo from Craig on this. And Ronnie also sounds great on this. He sounds great on most of these songs. Um, Naked in the Rain, another strong guitar riff here. Great drumming from Vinny on that. Brilliant track. Over Love. Love the guitar effects on this. Really interested. And it's just a great little rock track. I Could Have Been a Dreamer. More driving riffs. Again, one of Jimmy Bain's great bass lines that just drive for this song. Faces in the window sounds like um, a rainbow track and it's really good. Then we get at the album ends when a woman cry when a woman cries. It's a good track. It's got some good keyboards some from Claude. Nice way to end the album. This is a great album. Uh, not a bad track on this one at all. Uh, Considering it was done in 1987, and there's none of that overproduced nonsense. It's just a good, solid metal album from the time. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9.5. Coming in at number two, then we go to that second album, released in 1984, the last in line, classic lineup. Uh, Ronnie James Dio, Vinnie Apice, Jimmy Bain, Vivian Clown, Campbell, and this was the first album that Claude Schnell played keyboards on. Opens up with their brilliant We Rock classic Dio track. Love Vivian's guitar work on this. Great bass line from Jimmy. A great way to open up an album. Then we get the title track which is happens to be my favourite track on the album and my second favourite track by Dio The Last In Line I love the start of this that lovely de delicate guitar work from Vivian and then my god do we get a great riff and a great vocal from Ronnie one of the all time greats from Dio this is excellent track Breathless killer track again Jimmy Bain, Vivian Campbell, absolutely on fire, and a cool vocal from Ronnie on that. I do love that. I speed at night, fast and furious, and a brilliant solo from Vivian. Absolutely killer, absolutely great track. One night in the city, again, just classic tracks here. Uh, one of them driving bass lines from Jimmy. Solid drumming here from uh, Vinny. Brilliant track. Evil Eyes. Probably one of the weaker tracks on the album, but that doesn't make it bad because the standout thing on this one is the solo from Vivian. It is mega. Mystery is a little bit radio friendly, but it's a solid track. Um, Eat Your Heart Out. Great opening riff from Vivian. You're always going to get great opening riffs. 
from Vivian and this is one of his best absolutely brilliant track and then another classic Egypt the chains are on love Claude's keyboard on this it just adds to this Egyptian sort of feel to it it's a great track great way to win the album I you know when you have a mega debut album the second album always is good and I think they followed it up with a great second track S second album sorry I, I think it is it's still a brilliant album and it'll always be if one of my favorites my number two so I'm gonna give this an RTO ranking of 9.6 um, my number one well it was obvious what this was going to be um, I mean we did this in a classic album way back and at the end of the day it's still my number one album it's the debut album from 1983 of course Holy Diver uh, classic lineup Ronnie James Dio Vivian Campbell and Jimmy Bain and Vinnie Apice opens up well with probably the greatest opening track of a one of the great metal openings stand up and shout it's that opening riff that gets you hooked straight away you got um, Vinnie coming on on them drums Ronnie's vocal the but driving bass line from Jimmy is terrific Holy Diver one of my favorites it's my favorite song It's a song that really hooked me into this this reincarnation of Ronnie after Black Sabbath. I just love this. It's just a brilliant song. I think it's sort of um, you get heaven and hell, and then this is like the part two. Holy Diver is just an amazing track. Gypsy, another great track. Um, great solo from Vivian at the start screeching vocals here from Ronnie the guitar licks are brilliant Vinnie's drumming is top draw and again that driving bass line from Jimmy just blows you away caught in the middle again I love this track the guitar interplay between Vinny and Viv and Jimmy on this is brilliant you can't get any better than that don't talk to strangers another classic song reminds me of children of the sea it's got that gentle start again then it comes in with a booming riff and bass line again Jimmy Bain a great bass player so sad that he died but he died when he had that little um, reunion vid uh, Dio sort of thing he died doing a crew rock cruise he just died doing something he loved didn't he um, straight through the heart I just cut these tracks are just brilliant again um, that opening riff from Vivian the drumming from Vinnie and a terrific vocal from Mr. Dio as ever invisible this is um, Jimmy Bain's best performance on this album this is classic Jimmy Bain bass play and you got Vinny on the drums, screeching guitar solo from Vivian. Then we get another classic, the Rainbow in the Dark. Um, that keyboard just really adds to it. Um, okay, it's a bit cheesy, but that's what makes it great. It's a great track. Always love that one. Shame on the Night one of the slowest tracks on the album but it's still fantastic it's got a great um, solo from Vivian Ronnie's vocals are on fire on that and it's a good way to end the album well what can you say about this it's just a mega debut album one of the strongest debut albums you will ever get if you're just getting into heavy metal This is an album that you should play someone, even a young, one of the younger people. You've got to listen to this album. Um, it's just quintessential, isn't it? 
It's quintessential songs from Ronnie. Stargazer, Heaven and Hell, Holy Diver. And you could put the last in line in there as well. Um, said this before, sadly missed. You know, luckily to see him. I mean, whatever band he was in, he gave it all. And for this album, it's probably one of my favourite albums ever. And I'm going to give it the Big Ten, like I did when I reviewed it in Classic Album. It'll never be the same. Um, this album just does it for me. Okay, um, so that's the end of the Ronnie James Dio story. Uh, next week we start on another artist and we are going to do Sammy Hagar. Lots to look at with Sammy, Montrose, Van Halen, his solo stuff, and a few other little bits that he did during he's doing during his career. Um, great singer. A lot of controversy when he was with Van Halen and all that, and there's all that everything going on with that. Um, but I like Sammy Hagar. Always have. So that's a good one we're going to be doing. Um, I'll be back later though with a retro ranking and we're going to, into a nice little 60s phase today. We'll be looking at my favourite songs by the Mamas and Papas uh, just before we go. i um, like to let you know that the live streams are starting up in August. August the 4th is the first one. Looking forward to coming back and chatting with you guys I do miss it but we have to take things slowly of course um, if this is the first time you're watching thank you for watching and give me a thumbs up and if you like what we do go and have a look at the other stuff and subscribe and hit that bell so I'll be back later with Retro Ranking